What's up everyone, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So in today's video, we're gonna cover the RG350M. Now guys, I know this has been beaten to death so far by almost every YouTuber out there who does handheld reviews, but it's taken me some time to actually get my hands on this and I thought I'd give my two cents in on why this thing is actually pretty good or if it's not pretty good. But essentially, this is an emulation device that comes preloaded with several games and several emulators. So you can play all types of games from the Super Nintendo to Nintendo era, all the way up until PS1 and even some Nintendo 64 compatibility that I've seen on this. Now just up front, when it comes to Nintendo 64, it's not really playable by any means. You're gonna get really low frame rates, but it's just cool to see that they're trying to work and develop stuff like this for a handheld like this. So I'm gonna walk you guys through some gameplay on this. We'll go over the specs, the features, as well as what I think about this when there's a ton of other different types of emulation devices that you can buy in today's landscape. So let's take a look at all that good stuff after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVG Mall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. So let's jump into the RG350M. This is Amber Nick's latest handheld device that they released. Now this is a couple of months old at this point. However, it is an improved version of the original RG350. So if you guys have seen the RG350 reviews from last year or about eight, nine months ago, it's virtually identical in terms of specs. So in terms of specs, it's got the same CPU, it's got the same amount of memory, it's got the same amount of storage. Everything is virtually identical. The only differences that you can obviously notice are from the body itself, where there's a difference of the joystick stick placement. Obviously, there's a much more refined aluminum body compared to the plastic body that was on the RG350, and the layout of the ports and the settings are a little bit different in this compared to the RG350. So on the bottom, the most noticeable one that you can see is now they've included two external SD card slots. One is meant for the internal storage or where the operating system is, and that's good that they kept it separate, so if you want to flash custom firmwares and stuff, you're not going to lose all your data that's on your external one. And they also include a 32 gig in external card for you to copy all your ROMs, your games, your ISO files for your different emulators that you're going to be using on this device. So definitely a good touch there. On the top of the system, you have access to a headphone jack. You've got an OTG connector. You've got a mini HDMI connector, although in my testing, it has not been working. I don't know what's up with this, but when I plugged it into a TV, it didn't work. It's not actually sending out a signal. I'm not sure if there's an app that you need to use it with, but it just didn't work right off the box. And there's also a charging port on top. On the side of it, you have access to your power button. And on the other side, you have access to the volume rocker button. Buttons. And a last thing on the bottom that I forgot to mention is you have your two speakers that are exceptionally loud. I was blown away by the quality of the speakers on this little handheld. They're super loud. They're louder than any other handheld that I've had. They're almost on par with a nice flagship Samsung Galaxy phone, albeit minus the Dolby Atmos and all those kind of different drivers that come included on those really high-end phones. But nonetheless, you have all these different features. Of course, there's a reset button on the bottom as well, so it makes for a very nice package. Overall, guys, my initial impression of this is this thing feels expensive. If someone was to put this in my hand and slap a Sony logo on this or a Nintendo logo on it, I probably would believe that it is manufactured by one of those big manufacturers. And the reason is, is they've spent a lot of time in the design of it and also the screen quality, which is another noticeable difference or jump from the original RG350. This is using, I think, twice the resolution at 640 by 480 compared to 320 by 240 on the original RG350. So it's definitely got a much nicer screen. It's got a much nicer build. And overall, it just looks nicer than the original one. However, it's also coming in at almost twice the cost at retail of 130 bucks. Now the MSRP on this is $160. So right off the bat, I would probably stay away from it any handheld emulation only device for 160 bucks, but you can pick one up for about 130 to $120, depending on which outlet that you go to. And I'll leave links in the description below for you guys to pick one up if you're interested in after this review. So with the price tag that's two times as much of the original one where you can now find for about 55 to 70 bucks, it is kind of sad to see that they didn't upgrade any of the internals, which would have led to better emulation. Now that doesn't mean that the emulation on this thing isn't good. The emulation on this thing is fantastic. It runs PS1 games like a champ. It does all Super Nintendo, all Game Boy, all Game Boy Advance, and all Sega Genesis games with ease. I've had absolutely zero issues running any of the games at full speed. What kind of is disappointing is that you don't have access to running PSP games, although I believe I heard that there is is an application in the works for this device to run PSP games as they did with Nintendo 64. So overall, 
it's pretty fantastic in that regard. Now the price point is the biggest pill that I would say anyone has to swallow, but hey, you know what's unique about this is just the way it feels in your hand, the fact that it's very portable and compact, and that it does what it's intended to do really well. So those are my basic points about this actual device that I think makes it worth it in its price and of itself. However, we're looking at a market where you have tons of different opportunities and options when it comes to emulation. You've got stuff like a Pocket Go that you can use for emulation, which is super cheap comparable to this, and it runs pretty much everything just as well as this would with the exception of PS1 games because you lack those buttons on top. Now, one thing I did forget to mention or I didn't want to gloss over is the fact that they included R1 and R2 or dual shoulder buttons for each side, which is a godsend when it comes to these emulation devices. I can't tell you how many devices I've reviewed where they just don't have a second trigger button on top which really makes a world of a difference because it limits the amount of emulators you can actually enjoy with a handheld like this. Having access to two buttons on top makes PS1 games really easy and enjoyable to play as compared to trying to play something on a Pocket Go with a PS1 emulator on here. It just It does not work the same. Now, when I mention PS1 games working like a champ on this, there are some games that'll give you a few hiccups here and there and drop into the 40 or 50 um, FPS. However, if you go and enable frame skip on there and set that to auto, it takes care of any of those slowdowns that you may have. When testing, I played Tomb Raider on this, I played Crash Bandicoot on it, and I didn't have any major issues. I even played Driver on it and it played out pretty well. So overall, I was pretty impressed with the performance of this emulation. Now, like I mentioned before, any type of systems pre the PS1 generation, such as Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, it's going to basically chew that up and spit it out like it was nothing. It works flawlessly with those type of games very, very easily. So overall, guys, I would like to say that I'm pretty impressed with this. However, one thing to keep in mind, like I mentioned a little bit a while ago, is that there is a market full of different emulation devices. You have so many different options out there to get games on it, especially considering if you have a flagship phone yourself, this is a Galaxy Note 10, you can attach a grip just like the one you see here and basically have access to gaming up to and including Dreamcast level games on this that you won't get on devices like this. So you won't have to pay the extra except for the cost of the gamepad. Now, I'm not trying to make this a comparison video. All I'm trying to tell you guys is that if really what you're looking for is emulation and strictly emulation, you have a ton of different options of what you can buy. You can pick up stuff like a PS Vita. You can get a dedicated Android device like the Mochi i7 S, which I reviewed, which is a fantastic device, albeit it is three to four times more expensive. Or my personal favorite, you guys can go and grab a PS Vita for around the same price and get much better specs much better features, much better game libraries, and much more support for different homebrew applications. But then again, it really comes down to preference. This is about 130 bucks for a PS Vita today, or 160 depending on where you get it from. And this one is around the same price for that. If I was to make a direct comparison between the two, I think it'd be a no-brainer where you guys know based on my content, based on stuff I've done on my channel, which one I would go for. I think it's obvious that I would pick the PS Vita. However, that doesn't mean there is not a market for a device like this. The reason why I still really appreciate Embernic's attempt to make a nice retro handheld emulation device is because that's exactly what it is. It is a perfectly sized handheld retro emulation device. And that in itself makes it very valuable to me and I think a lot of other folks out there. Having to lug this around in your pocket, honestly guys, as much as I love it, it's not really convenient. This thing is super huge and so are all the other devices. And when I compare it to a Pocket Go, which is a lot smaller, yes, this is a lot more easier to slide in your pocket, but the quality is not nearly as good. So if you want something kind of in between both worlds, this is a fantastic device to look forward to. I like the build quality of it. I like that it's able to play games really well. And I like the overall buttons that they've included on this. It's just works. It, it really just works really flawlessly. Both the joysticks have the right amount of tension and they don't feel cheap and they don't feel like you're going to get a lot of joystick drift. And in my testing, I've spent a couple of afternoons with this so far and I've had zero issues with it at all. So I really enjoyed this device. And guys, I would actually recommend that if you don't have an RG350 or you don't have access to any of the other devices I've shown you so far today, this is worth a pretty good buy. Now, if you already have the RG350, I wouldn't say it's necessary to go pick up an RG350M at all, by any means necessary, just because you're pretty much not missing out on any of the hardware specs of it, and you're gonna be able to do the same emulation that you can on that as compared to this as well. So that's that. So with that out of the way, this is a solid device, and I would recommend that you guys go ahead and pick this up if you're looking for this type of handheld. And when I say this type of handheld, I mean 
this form factor, this body, this type of screen, this type of layout of a gamepad, the fact that it's really portable, it fits nice in your pocket, it feels premium. And one of the cool things I do like about it is that it comes preloaded with games, so you don't really need to go out and do all the homework of trying to get ROMs, where to get them from, all the ISO files and whatnot, and it comes with a pretty decent selection of games as well. Now, if you wanna go ahead and add more, you can always do that by popping up the SD card here and just putting in your computer or whatever you have to go ahead and copy games over to it, and it works well. So with that, guys, I would say this is worth a buy for a very special type of person. So when I say special, I mean the person who's looking for a device like this. So it's definitely nice that Embernec went ahead and made this upgrade. I think it's a solid upgrade compared to the other. I would have liked to see the specs on the internal being a little bit better or a little bit more improved, more memory, more processing speed or whatever it would have taken to do better emulation in this case. However, it doesn't mean that this doesn't have a nice niche that it's going to target. And with that, I will leave links in the description below. Now guys, again, this has been beaten to death by every other YouTuber, so you guys pretty much already know what you're gonna be getting into. So with that, if you guys do like the RG350M, I will leave links down in the description where you guys can go pick one up at your convenience. Also, if you guys found this video helpful or if it helped you making your decision between picking up other emulation devices or even just picking up the RG350M, as I mentioned in today's video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And guys, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying really hard to get to 100K and make this channel flourish and grow so I can put out more content for you guys. It really helps. So I know there's a lot of you guys that watch my content but don't necessarily subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe while you're here. It definitely helps me keep my motivation and the channel up for you guys. I really appreciate it. As always, thank you very much for staying through to the end of this video and I will catch you guys on my next one. So peace out.